Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Christoph and myself are going to give you a concrete example on the way ESCO can be implemented into Europass and EURES and to which extent it can directly help, for example, citizens, citizens to find for a job. So I will start uh, describing the implementation of ESCO in Europass. So Europass in brief, I don't think, I don't think to insist on that because you all have heard about Europass. It's five, five documents to help citizens, employers, and education and training authorities. Uh, so the relevance of ESCO for Europass here is clear because ESCO will help citizens, for example, choosing the right terms to present their skills and qualifications when drafting their CV. Also, ESCO will help employers uh, find the right uh, employees when looking for workforce by browsing the U.S. Uh, website, the U.S. platform, looking for uh, employees. And last but not least, ESCO will also help education and training authorities express the learning, the content of qualification, the content of curricula in terms of learning outcomes. So uh, the five Europass documents, we, you know them, I guess, so we'll not insist on them. You have the CV, you have the language passport, you have the mobility, which is a record of learning outcomes gained during a stay abroad, for example, during a exchange program, Erasmus, whatever. You have the certificate supplement, which is the description of the content of vocational qualifications skills acquired, levels of qualifications, occupations which are accessible, for example. This document is very useful for holders of vocational qualifications who want to find a job in another country, so they go to the national inventory, they download the certificate supplement corresponding to the qualification, and they are then in a position to explain to an employer what they know and the diploma supplement, which is more or less the same thing, but for higher education. Uh, Europass statistics in brief. Uh, the portal is available in 26 languages, 75 million since launched in 2005, and 32 million CVs completed online, and the traffic has been increasingly steadily. Uh, to date, we have more or less 1 million CVs completed online every month, which means one CV every five seconds, more or less. So Europass, URES, and interoperability. We already use a lot of taxonomies to describe uh, country names, uh, sex, nationality, language names, and levels, which is very convenient. For example, if you already have a Europass CV, and you want to make your CV in another language, you just have to upload the file, switch to another language of the site, and half of your CV will be auto automatically translated. Also, Europass offers web services for employment services, either private or public, who want to cooperate with Europass and being interoperable. For example, if you have a job portal, you can make the technical modifications required to be uh, compatible with Europass and enable job seekers to upload their CVs on your system. Alors, why being interoperable with uh, uh, Europass? What is the added value for uh, job portals? Of course, it's visibility because Europass is very visibility, so very visible. Sorry, so by accepting Europass CV you increase the visibility of your own platform. So what is the next step? Now we have already uh, taxonomy, as we know, for languages, nationality. Now we will implement taxonomies for occupation skills. So the new thing for Europass is when you go and complete your CV, we have here two screenshots about work experience. So you describe, you describe your work experience by choosing an occupation from the taxonomy, from the ESCO taxonomy. And automatically, there's a list of, of skills 
which are related to these specific occupations, which is displayed in the box uh, job-related skills. And from this list, you can select the skills you want to keep on your CV. And this, it's also, this will be also applied to transversal skills, such as uh, communication skills, computer skills, social skills, and so far and so on. So the new thing for job seekers is you will have directly access to the uh, catalog of skills and occupations to better draft your CV and choose the right terms to be more visible. So uh, here I have a screenshot of how the new CV will look like. And you can see uh, at the bottom of the screen the list of job-related skills that I chose, uh, that I chose uh, from the ESCO skills taxonomy. So, but it's not enough. For the time being, in Europass, you can either download the CV on your PC and send it, or receive it by email. But as soon as the new URES portal will be launched, you will have another option will be to upload directly your CV to the Europass website, to the URES platform. And here I leave the floor uh, to my colleague who is going to explain more in detail the way the new URES platform is going to work. Thank you. Okay, so basically we'll be doing the same. As soon as we got Euris, we started making a new version of our CV online, which is going to use fully the ESCO, uh, and we are very happy with ESCO, because finally we can go a step further than we are doing today. Uh, the new version will be there somewhere in March next year, and it will be using ESCO wherever we can. And I will show you briefly, because I want to show you what you can do with the CVs on matching. It will be fully interoperable with Europass as well. So we are working closely together, meaning that whatever CV version you would start with, you can go to the other one. Thanks to ESCO, we don't have any problems on the skills. They are the same. So people will choose their editor, and they can find a job in whatever system. I think the future is really open, so we don't have to think about which tool. The, the question is, where do I find my job? It's the same. I will not go into detail when you make a CV on a new uh, URES CV online, you start with the occupation at the top as before, and today it stops there. You would say, I was a beauty care assistant, which is quite fake. Today, thanks to ESCO, as you see, we produce the same list of skills, and a person can indicate, I've been doing this and this and this, which is much more detailed. And I will show you what a difference it makes when we go looking for a job. So ESCO will be everywhere. It will be in the experience, it will be in the non-experience skills, even if you express your desired occupations, you will be able, let's see at the bottom, to indicate I want to do this job and particularly I'm interested in doing energy massages. So also in your desires you can be much more specific in what you want, thanks to ESCO. So the conclusion is that ESCO is going to be used already from beginning 2014 by the European Systems for CVs. We will interchange the format so you can pick whatever system you want. And as ESCO will improve over the next years, our system will automatically benefit because we are connected of the new skills. We don't have to develop new versions. So we can really have a synergy between the different parties uh, involved. Now I want to show you a demo. I had a live demo, but I don't have time enough to show it online, so I'm going to use the backup slide that I had. This is a CV, and as you see, I put in two work experience. I told that I was a spa therapist, and you see the skills uh, listed there baby massage instructor, and another one I was also working until present as a massage therapist, and you see also the skills. So the system today would only know the two occupation codes, tomorrow it would have the skills. And I want to show you, you know, today what makes us a difference when we go for matching. We built a prototype which has been finished last week, so it was quite just in time for this, where we want to see this really happening. So this is real data. It was a real CV matching against the real Euros vacancies. And we wanted to see what happens if you put ESCO on or off. This is when ESCO is off. We get vacancies with all the same score. The matching rule there, we can only have the occupation code and the vacancies only have the occupation code. So the best thing you can do is say, you know what, I've got 200 vacancies here. You go through it and you try to read and hopefully you will find which one is the best one. 
It's not bad. You can find a job as you do today, but watch what happens if we put ESCO on. Because the skills are on the vacancies there and the skills are in my CV, the system can much more find the two needles in the haystack. So you see here that the one coming at the top, massage therapist, is really much more spot on of what I expressed that I wanted to do. And the second one, for instance, has a score eight. The skills are the same because the contract type is not what I expressed. It's only a temporary contract and the first one is a permanent. So matching is not only on the skills. The skills is very important. We can take all these things into consideration and find automatically these jobs that people need to find and not have to go to a lot of. And thanks to ESCO and the multilingual aspect of ESCO, because that's a really difficult thing, the vacancies are maybe in German, thanks to these skills, we can go detail and we can go across the different languages. And the prototype is already proving today that it can really make a difference. So we will continue building already the matching engine of the future as people hopefully will get the ESCO skills on their vacancies. Because the visa are going to be ready for the vacancies, we are really looking at the public employment services and everyone involved. Also, there may be one word, I got the question before. We don't, we don't need ESCO to be already in all the public employment services. There are other systems like natural language processing that we can go to the text of the vacancies and try to determine or infer which kind of skills could maybe be mentioned in there. So that's also something we are investigated that we maybe can already today put ESCO on the vacancies while we're waiting for everyone, the players on the market, to also put them really directly into the systems. So we're trying, we are really needing ESCO to, to do our job and we will in the next year start implementing these systems uh, as we go. So we are happy to take any questions on this. I'm sorry I had to go so fast, but... Right, well thank you very much. You're doing really well with the timing. You're ahead of time, so that's absolutely fantastic. You can smile about that. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've filled in a Europass CV. It's been quite a few, so thank you for that. <laughs> it's going to get easier as we go along. We have a question here at the, well, not quite the front. Here we go. Oh, can I navigate these projectors? Right, please, if you could stand up, give us your name and where you come from and the question. I'm Wouter Kerkhove, I'm from uh, Europass Flanders, VDAB. I just have a small question because I've heard you around my neighbours also quite confusing, but I think it's just a small misunderstanding that you have, you speak about my EuroCV, but is that only online platform? Where, or can you, will you have like a paper EuroCV, what is a different format than the paper Europass CV? Because that's, what, that's my question. Yeah. So Okay, um, well we're gonna take a couple of questions and then run that through. Get I think you had a sorry, Gert. Um you said that there will be different uh, uh, possibilities to publish uh, the CV. I, I saw the Europass uh, portal uh, on the Euros portal and you can send it out <clears throat> by email eh? and probably print it. Um how is this, is this marked? In, I, I never used a, your pass. Is that marked when I create a CV? Uh, is it somewhere indicated where I have published it? Or are we uh, putting it on different <coughs> platforms? And are we counting? How do you avoid then that the same CV is being counted uh, multiple times uh, where there's only one? Great. Would you like to take those two? I will reply to the last question. We do not keep, uh, Europass does not keep record of CV. Okay, so when you make your CV, you have to save it on your computer or send it to your email address. So in this way, Eures and Europass are not competitive. We do not keep track of uh, CVs completed online, except for statistical purposes, okay? But CVs completed data entered by user are completely erased afterwards. So both systems are not competitive. This is why we are going to give users the possibility to upload the Europass CV directly on uh, the US website. And later on, on, also on other platforms, national employment services or private or public services. <coughs> no. 
So the first question was also a bit related to these the different versions. And so important is that we've got we are delivering services to job seekers. And for the Euros portal, as we want to do job mobility uh, across Europe, we need to do matching. So we need to have your CV stored in a certain format because we are also getting the vacancies. And if I want to be able to send you that email that you're waiting for, like here is your dream job, then I need to store the information. So depending, the, the standards will be the same. Basically, a job seeker needs to express its CV maybe because he needs to send it in to apply for a job and then maybe the Europass is perfect because he also has some, some experience abroad where he can use one of the documents from Europass. So then he will just go from the portal, produce his Europass CV and print it out. But like if we want to print from Europass, from Euros for instance, we just produce a Europass CV. Because both of them are, so to the job seeker in the end, it should be all transparent, just saying, look, if I want to do matching, I put it there. If I want to have it printed or I want to have one of those documents, I just go there and we are really trying to get these systems aligned that it becomes very, and also if you have the presentation for my colleagues about where we're going with Euros in the future, you will see that when it's not a Euros portal in the end. We want to come to a system where CVs, you've got a total hub of CVs and a total hub of vacancies. And all the players on the market that are partners of this network will be able to find the CVs or find the vacancies they need to service job seekers or employers. And we will just facilitate services like matching engines, uh, toolkits that a public employment service can put on their website. So they make, for instance, a cross-border initiative where they produce something that they can find the vacancies and they're coming just from us. So this is really the vision, and for those that didn't see that presentation yet for my colleagues, that it will become clear that this is only one part of the puzzle about very big plans for the future. But it all starts by having the common language for skills, which is uh, the bird is today. Very does, good. Does that answer the does question? That answer, yeah, oh, yeah, thinking the same, but <laughs> does that answer the question? Well, Hang on. Yeah. <coughs> we need to use the microphone. It, it does answer the question, but I just wanted to, I, I, I didn't need yeah, I, the information you gave, too much information, yeah, not, okay, oh, sorry, just going to, but I just wanted to ask if you, you know, Europass is mostly printed out version, like on paper, what you have, but then if you, if I'm just, I'm on the Euros portal, I have my Euros CV filled in, if I want to print it out, just that, and I print it out, will I have two options, will I have a paper Euros CV, or will that be then the Europass CV? Just on the paper form, not on the database. If I'm, you know, I'm on the, you, you told me that you could, from the portal, you could print it out also from the Euros portal. Yep. So I'm on that portal, will I have two options, Europass, Euros, or will this just be Europass in the paper form? Today it is, yeah. Thank you very much. We have a question over here as well, and then we can take both questions together. Please. <coughs> oh, sorry. Claudia Bleimauer from 3S. Um, when people um, fill in uh, their CV using your tool, are they only um, allowed to um, check uh, terms from a pre-selected list, list of ESCO skills, or will they also have the opportunity to make free text entries for example, if they cannot find the term that adequately describes the skill. I'm asking this question because this would be a, a perfect source for further developing the taxonomy. Yeah, exactly. So I'm personally involved a lot in the matching and the search tools. And what I see is that you need a combination. You need this codified information, which a user has to select, but you need this free text that a person can just describe really what he means. And with the current tools, together with these taxonomies and natural language processing, together you get the most powerful stuff. So we're really putting everything on the two uh, tools and uh, the, the new editors, also the one from Europass, really, you will see it's and codification, but always also free text. And even in multiple languages that you can express what you want in uh, different languages. And to respond to the question of, of printing, the current version has only the option, I think, to print in uh, Europass because 
why should we develop something as if the Europass CV is perfectly uh, describing and as a, as a, a known uh, print layout? Um, I don't know for the moment, because we're also developing things in different stages. I don't think that for the moment we plan to have a, our own printout, but maybe there will be kind of an email format or an online sharing format. Whatever need there is to deliver a service to a public employment service or to the job seekers, we will take that into account and see that we develop uh, something. But the main goal is to get to this matching as soon as possible. Very good. We have yeah. two further questions. The gentleman at the front and then the gentleman here. Uh, Mr. Umgard from uh, Belgium. So we saw that uh, Europass is a set of five uh, documents and uh, one of these five can be picked up in Euris. Why is it not possible to have the, the whole package because it's containing very important information, uh, not only on diploma supplements, certificate supplements, also on language proficiency, uh, experiences, uh, mobility paths. So is it pos possible to have the whole package, the whole portfolio yes. in the URIS, uh, and not only the CV? For example, as, as annexes to the CV, for example. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm uh, Christoph from uh, the German PES. Just one question to the matching um, engine. Um, are there any plans to, to consider uh, similarities between uh, competences or skills? Yeah. So those are the last two questions, and then we need to m move. These gentlemen will be taken away from us. And if you stay here, then two more people will come and we'll have another presentation. So to answer the first question, we are taking as the maximum number of information. So everything which is for sure to be codified or needed for matching, we will take. And like the extra documents, uh, I think they are taking into as attachments. So we just take different sections and we get the information there. And if there would be a matching need tomorrow, if some vital information is within the document, then we can consider not getting it as an attachment, but getting the raw text in. So this is really something which is under development. Well, wants to. Yeah. And so to answer the question from Christophe, the whole challenge in matching, because it's a very complex thing, is the more this taxonomy and ESCO grows and the more links you get like this is similar to that and that's also a synonym of that kind of so the more complex this taxonomy can be built, so I'm hoping that the people from the reference group will continue doing it. If we put this into the new technologies, they just use that. So you don't have to program all this if you tend to the system like, hey, the taxonomy now says something like similarities. And in the business rule, in my matching rule, you have to consider this important or not important to the scoring. The system will automatically start using this extra information coming into the system. I can tell you it's a very complex <laughs> It really needs specialist work, but the good news is that the more you get into the taxonomy, the system will automatically start doing a better job in matching. So we don't have to update our system all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for today, but a big round of applause, please.